Do you want to practice astrology in a more accurate and concrete way that allows you to give more powerful readings to your astrological clients? Then join us for our upcoming Uranian Astrology for Practicing Astrologers Immersion, which begins this January 30th, 2024. You can find out more information by checking out the link down below in the description box. Hey there everyone, Michael A. Bryan here from the Oracular School of Astrology with yet another question and answer segment where practicing astrologers bring me their questions and I provide them answers based on my astrological practice. Okay, I have a question. Um, as, in, as you mentioned in the last class, you showed us some memory training, which was incredible and really exciting. And so I have a question for you about... Um, other types of memory training in um, when you're learning astrology because you have such an incredible recall of aphorisms and quotations and facts and and the planetary combinations and i'm just wondering do you have um any kind of system that you could share for new astrologers um like it, do you build memory palaces for each planet or i'm just curious about how you do that, that only if you're willing to share it thank you so this next question has to do with our astrological superpower here at the Oracular School of Astrology, which is our use of astrological memory techniques in order to colonize our brains with a lot of astrological information. How this whole thing started for me was I was watching a presentation by Robert Hand once. And he was talking about the essential dignities table. And he said, no one ever memorizes the essential dignities table because it's basically an impossible thing to memorize. He didn't say that, but he basically alluded to the fact that no one ever memorizes the essential dignities table. And instead of memorizing it, what we should do is print it out, laminate it, and keep it in our top pockets. Now, by the time as I was born, people had already stopped printing and laminating things. So first of all, I was like, what's a lamination? <laughs> and so I had no idea what he was talking about. But what I did realize was that he was essentially saying that this thing wasn't something that was possible. Or I took what he said to me and that this thing is impossible, it's not necessary, just print it out and laminate it. I'm a very Saturnian person, but I'm also a very Plutonian person. And whenever somebody says that something can't be done, that for me is like they're dropping the gauntlet <laughs> and challenging me to pick it up and do it. So at that point, I said, let me go and find a way to memorize this essential dignities table. Because personally, I like to do things that other people in the astrological community aren't doing. And I think that at Oraculos, we do many things that don't exist anywhere else in the astrological community. And our use of memory techniques within the training of our level zero astrologers is one of our, I don't know, I guess it's a part of the Oraculos advantage. And so I started to look up memory training. I didn't know what I was looking up, but I started to look up memory training. And that took me down a rabbit hole that led me to the feet of someone who was at the time the grand master of memory in the entire world. And his name is Kevin Horsley. And Kevin mentored me in mnemotechnics or memory techniques in order to memorize a vast amount of information. One of the things that he taught me how to do was how to memorize a deck of playing cards forward and backward in less than a minute of time. And that's something that I used to do consistently within my life because I thought it was amazing. Now, I haven't done it in a while because at this point in my situation, I don't necessarily need to be memorizing a deck of playing cards. However, it is a powerful thing to do to see your mind operate at such a high level. So I took those initial techniques that Kevin taught me and I formed them in such a way whereas I could teach my students how to memorize a vast amount of information and how to store it categorically within their minds so that they could recall it at will. And one of the things that I teach my students how to memorize is the Antitia and the Contra Antitia signs. I also teach them signs of long and short ascension. I also teach them the triplicity rulers 
And while I've been threatening to teach people this for years, I haven't actually taught them how to memorize the essential dignities table, even though I myself have memorized the entire essential dignities table. But the point is that I think for me, as I look back at traditional astrology, especially astrologers in the 13th century and before, I don't think people were walking around with a lamination of the essential dignities table in their top lapel. And as a result of that, I think it's very important for astrologers as much as we can to offload as much of our astrological information in our minds. Now, when I came onto the American astrology scene, which pretty much happened during the pandemic, this was my message <laughs> to the universe that we should memorize things. And there were people who took offense to that. And I think the people who took the most offense to that were the people who hadn't put themselves in a position to even learn how to do it. And the truth is, mnemotechnics is a very, very, very easy thing. It's ridiculously easy. And it's so easy that it even feels foolish or childish at times when you take yourself through the process of memorizing things. But the point is, it's very, very easy. Anybody could do it. As a result of me letting people know that at Oraculos we memorize everything, I think that gave people the wrong impression because I think the impression people got was that we memorize things in the way how you're forced to memorize the times table in fifth grade or whatever grade people memorize the timetable. I think that people got that impression that I was forcing our Oraculos students to memorize things by rote. But that's not what it is. And that's not what mnemotechnics are as a group of memory techniques in general. And so in people's advertisements for their astrology schools, they started to put little things in there that said, you don't need to know how to memorize anything and you don't need to be a genius or whatever. And I was like, why are you being so shady, basically? Because the truth is, if you gave yourself a little bit of time to learn what memory techniques are, you realize that it is an exhilarating, fun, exciting way to see your mind do marvelous things. Now, to the other part of this question that this caller asked, how I specifically am able to recall all that I recall, it isn't just because I know how to memorize things. Because when you start learning astrological mnemotechnics or mnemotechnics for any reason, you realize that you have a certain amount of real estate within your mind. And on the one hand, it's infinite. But on the other hand, thinking about your mental real estate as being infinite is exhausting. So for me, I have a certain amount of mental real estate that I want to occupy in terms of things that I use mnemotechnics for. And I don't memorize every single nook and cranny of astrology. But what I do do is I think about an aphorism for a very long time, and then I apply that aphorism consistently within my practice for a week or for two weeks or for a month or for three months so that that aphorism becomes rooted within my soul and psyche simply because of me continuing to reference it. And that's really how my relationship to all of the planetary combinations are. When you hear me talking about the various planetary combinations and what they represent, that's not coming from memorization. That's just coming from me having a robust client-based practice. And I think that that's actually something that's missing to a very large degree within the astrological community because there are many people who call themselves astrologers today who have no client practice. They have no demonstrable astrological abilities or skills. They have cultivated no astrological powers within themselves that allow them to seem as if they're tapping into something greater than just something that they read in the book. And so I think that the most important thing that an astrologer can have is an actual client-based practice. Because your client-based practice becomes your astrological laboratory in which you take the aphorism that you want to focus on for this month and you apply that in every single chart you read for a one-month period and then you take a next aphorism and you apply that for another one month period. And you do that over and over and over and over again until your mind becomes a treasure house of astrological knowledge. The other thing that I think is largely missing from within astrology today is the importance of astrological research. 
we need to centralize research more and we also need all of us as astrologers who practice astrology with clients to view our client practice as a field of astrological research. For example, many people know my Moon Chiron fixation. I hated Chiron for a long time. I thought people who used Chiron were the stupidest people in the world. And then Chiron bulldozed itself into my astrological practice and it did so in a very specific way. And it did so in terms of people who have the Moon Chiron contact. And 9.5 times out of 10, when somebody has Moon Chiron within their charts, they have a grotesque maternal story. My mother didn't love me. My mother wanted a boy, but she got a girl. My mother wanted a cat, but she got a child. My mother locked herself in her bedroom and said that she'd commit suicide. My mother locked herself in the bedroom and actually did commit suicide. My mother was on horse tranquilizers because she was mentally unstable. My mother had bipolar disorder. My mother had schizophrenia. All of these harrowing things happen when people have the Moon Chiron contact. That knowledge is written in nobody's book. I don't think it's written in somebody's book. Maybe it is written in somebody's book. As many of you know, I recently interviewed Melanie Reinhardt. I think she is a gem of gems. And she's the person who essentially was the first person to talk about Chiron in the West in an actual astrological conference setting. So probably she wrote about it. But when I told her my Moon Chiron research, it was surprising to her as well. So the point is, very often, when this Moon Chiron piece comes up, it manifests in that specific way. Very often when people have Mercury Chiron, they're afraid of public speaking. They're also afraid of travel. They're afraid to get in the plane. They're afraid to drive a car. They're afraid of mercurial endeavors, but they're definitely having a fear of speaking. That's something that I've also found. I've probably found that to be true eight times out of 10. Where I found the Moon Chiron to be true, 9.5 times out of 10. And I think that as astrologers, we need to have that. <laughs> like we need to know the things that are true more often than not. And we need to know the things that are just bullshit. And there's a lot within astrology that's bullshit, actually. And you'll never know that unless you actually form a concrete client-based practice for yourself. So the moral of this very long rant is that one, you are infinitely capable to occupy and colonize your mind with a wealth of astrological information. It is a delightful thing to see yourself holding this information within yourself without having to reference books about it. It is a wonderfully empowering thing to learn memory techniques because they broaden the parameters of what we think is actually possible for us. But Outside and beyond of the realm of learning specific techniques that allow you to have that information in your mind, the only way, the greatest way for you to actually develop a magical relationship with astrology is for you to practice astrology with people, is for you to practice astrology with clients, is for you to dedicate yourself to actual astrological client work. Looking up the chart of Jennifer Lopez does not qualify as actual astrological client work. Looking up the chart of Beyonce doesn't qualify as actual astrological client work. Looking up the charts of celebrities is the most boring thing in the world, which is why we don't do it at the Oracular School of Astrology. You will never see me give a conference lecture with a celebrity chart because it is the most non-dimensional thing in the world because anybody can talk about Michael Jackson after Michael Jackson has died. Anybody can talk about Whitney Houston and reverse engineer realities within Whitney Houston's birth chart that corroborate their prejudgments. But only when we work with the charts of people who we have access to, clients, family members, friends, people in our immediate locale who we can speak to, have a conversation with, corroborate information with, only when we work with the charts of people who are actually within our lives do we actually have the ability to grow true astrological skill? So if you're looking at celebrity charts, I'm not the boss of anyone, but I must tell you that 
you're doing no favors to yourself. You need to get up off your behind and go out into the world and find a client and work with a client and actually do astrological work with people. Put yourself in a position to be wrong. Being wrong as an astrologer is one of the best ways to grow as an astrologer. Every time I've ever been wrong, I remember. <laughs> because I have a personal relationship to being wrong that is kind of crazy. I'm a very Saturnian, very Plutonian person. I don't like to be wrong. And so I have amassed for myself a system of techniques that I know emphatically work at least 9.5 times out of 10. But you as an astrologer also have to do that work for yourself because if you don't do that work for yourself, you're just regurgitating what somebody else said. And even though that person might fully believe that thing with every fiber of their being because that thing works for them, you have to put those things to work within your own client practice in order to discover if those things are universally true or in order to discover if there are other things that you might find within the application of that technique that that other person hasn't found yet. Because we all bring ourselves to the astrology that we practice, even if we're practicing in an astrological lineage. So the moral of the story is learn some memory techniques. It's the most exciting thing you can do in the world. It's probably not the most exciting thing you can do in the world, but it's a wonderful pastime and you won't regret it and start giving readings to people, to living, breathing, actual people who are not celebrities, who are not Donald Trump, who are not Joe Biden, who are not people who you'll never have a conversation with in your life, but to actual living, breathing people, because that is where the magic of astrology most fully unfolds within our lives. And that is when, after one year of doing that, two years of doing that, five years of doing that, when you open your mouth, you will give the world nothing but a stream of universal wisdom as far as astrology is concerned because you would have gotten yourself completely wet and absorbed within the oceans of actual real astrology where real astrology actually occurs, which is in the lives of real living people. That was so helpful. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> You're very welcome. If you've enjoyed today's show, then please remember to hit subscribe down below. I'm currently on a mission to get 12,000 subscribers across all platforms, which includes YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify by the end of November 2023. And it's a tall order, but I'm pretty sure we can do it because we make some really good astrological content here on the Oraculous Podcast. So please remember to hit subscribe down below, hit the notification bell so that you receive notifications of when we come out with these episodes on a daily basis and please share 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 the oraculous podcast with your other astrologically minded friends so that more and more people can know about the amazing work that we're doing over here on the oraculous podcast